fellowship service of Victoria Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. This is Sunday, October the 1st, 2023. It's the uh, 18th Sunday of Pentecost. It's also the first Sunday of the month. So we will be taking a communion. If you'd like to turn off the video right now to go get your elements of bread and juice, wine, whatever you may have, just water and a cookie if you'd like to partake along with us, then you may do that at this time and then just turn the video back on and follow uh, through with, with us in this worship time. But we are glad that you're worshiping with us. As we begin, we'll be going through our call to worship and opening hymn. For those who are able, let us please stand for the call to worship. The heavens are telling the glory of God. May our worship reflect God's glory. The firmament proclaims God's handiwork. May we see each other as the handiwork of God. Let our prayer and praise, our singing and proclamation, project the love of God. We commune with Christians around the world, with Christians throughout time with Christians across geography and across time. Let us worship. Let us remain standing as we sing, Christ is made the sure foundation. Concerns dictate otherwise. So next Sunday, Free Briarwood Community Meal. And then that following Saturday, October the 14th, we'll be having a fundraiser for the Free Briarwood Community Meal. October the 14th uh, will begin at uh, 6 p.m. 6 to 7. We'll be gathering for uh, appetizers and people can look around at the gift baskets and that if they'd like to buy some of the raffle tickets for those gift baskets. We'll be playing bingo. 
Uh, the meal itself is $20. It includes a ticket for the door prize plus, uh, plus the meal itself. And the meal will be uh, Italian peppers, onions, and uh, sausage, mashed potatoes, uh, some sort of chicken. Where I think it's chicken franchise. I have to check where Derek Schnars will be cooking for us. And mashed potatoes along with a, a, some kind of a vegetable medley. And then we have cheesecake for dessert. So uh, good meal, uh, good time, and uh, we'll just come and enjoy the day. Uh, something very good to look forward to. We haven't had anything like this for about three years, so it's nice to gather people together again and, and feel comfortable in doing so. As we continue with our worship service today, we'll be going into our Psalter reading, which today comes from Psalm 19. The response will be, O oh God, you are my rock and my redeemer. Let us begin with the response. O oh God, you are my rock and my redeemer. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech. And night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth. And their words to the end of the world. In the heavens God has set a tent for the sun. Which comes out like a beloved from the wedding canopy, and like an athlete runs in the course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the ends of them, and nothing is hid from his feet. O oh God, God, you are my rock and my, my redeemer. The law of God is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of God are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of God are right, and rejoicing the heart. The commandments of God is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of God is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of God are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless. And innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. O God, my rock and my redeemer. O God, you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Our time of confession today is a unison prayer. Let us go to God as we confess to God our own selves and our humanity as we fail, but also to remember God's forgiveness. Let us pray. Gracious God, we too often focus on the differences among us rather than celebrating what we share in common. Forgive us. Help us to remember we are siblings to all of humanity each and all of us created in your image, we choose conflict, redirect our thoughts and actions to your love and your call to love each other. Amen. Hear these words of the assurance of God's blessing. As children of God, we are loved tenderly. God longs to bring us into God's embrace by the life and love of Jesus. You are forgiven and free. Amen. Our statement of faith today will be the Apostles' Creed. For those who are able, let us please stand as we repeat this creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace. You at home, greet the person beside you with a hug, kissing the cheek, or a firm handshake or a firm grip. Uh, if no one is there with you after the worship, uh, call someone up, uh, FaceTime with them, and wish that individual the peace of Christ and just say it's good to hear your voice and good to have you in my life. As we continue through our worship today, our first lesson will be read by um, Nancy Gray. Exodus 20, verses 1 to 4, and seven to nine and twelve to twenty then god spoke all these words i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of slavery you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself an idol whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you, and to put the fear of him upon you, so that you do not sin. May God's blessing and understanding be added to these words. The second lesson of the day will be read by Sandra Wiesner. Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 to 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gain I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. God's blessing be added to these words that we have heard. It is our privilege now to come before God's throne of grace, but not just now, but any time. And at this specific time in our worship, we share with one another our joys and concerns. 
I mentioned near the beginning of the service that we've had a lot of rain the last couple of days, and I'm glad that the rains have um, had stopped and there's sunshine today. But also a couple of years ago, we had a hurricane, or we had a storm, Ida, that actually flooded a lot of basement and we lost lives in New York City. So this time we had no loss of lives, even though we had about the same, uh, even more rain. So we are working on infrastructure, but we thank God that that infrastructure can be worked on. We know that other communities, there, there are more damage in other places along the East Coast and uh, with the water damage is not, does not fare as well. But we are thankful here in New York uh, as we do comparison to at least give God the glory that, that we have knowledge and technology technology and workforce to do those kinds of things to help us to be safer. There are other specific concerns. We're going to be traveling this week, so pray for traveling mercies. <laughs> for Sandy and Nancy, travel mercies. Uh, we, um, we're going to so far away in Pennsylvania, but <laughs> still you never know what kind of adventures, adventures you'll get to. Uh, we do do want to say that uh, Cynthia Roche had the uh, left foot, uh, a stint put in, in in the artery through the left foot, and um, it seems to be working well, but they're still going to have to do a little bit more work with the, uh, the aorta through the stomach region. Uh, it's, it's, significant, it's significantly blocked, but they're just using some blood thinners right now. And they're discussing whether or not that they may go through and, and do maybe a, a stint later or at least try to clean it out. So. But she is, she says it feels good to be able to move her feet and, not, and to have circulation. <laughs> so we're glad for, for that part and we continue to pray for Cynthia. Others today. Remember to pray for yourself. Uh, remember to pray for the church, pray for your leaders, pray for one another, and to always give God the glory for giving you life. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we lift our voices unto you with thanksgiving. The heavens are telling your glory. The heavens proclaim, the earth proclaims your glory. All of creation proclaims the glory of your name, and we too proclaim that glory. We give you our thanksgiving and we return ourselves to the one who has created us. We return to our maker, the one who requests us to say, come, let us talk together, let us reason. Tell me about your joys, tell me about your problems, tell me about life. And we are grateful, God, you do communicate with us. We lift before you those that have come through some uh, devastating natural disasters, not only here in New York, but in many other places in the United States and all over the world. We sometimes are so selfish, we forget that we're not the only ones that, uh, that feel the effects of floods. We know that in, uh, in Europe and in, the, in Asia, in many places in Africa, these situations occur to the same as hurricanes, typhoons, tidal waves, earthquakes, fires. Let us not be so neglectful to think that we are the only people. We know that you care for all of those individuals and we pray for those that are in recovery that you would give them safety and solace, places to live, places that they may have food and shelter and be with their family and community. But also as they grieve, be with their hearts as they have lost loved ones. And be with those rescue workers and those that rebuild and help in the infrastructure. For, oh Lord, you have filled us people with, with knowledge. We, have, we use that knowledge for good, to help others to help others to maintain safety, and to help others to have joy within living. We pray for travel mercies, we pray for all those that surround us, 
We thank you for healing and ways in, in medicine that help us to feel more whole. We thank you to glory and thanksgiving for successful stints for uh, Cynthia Roche in both the right and left foot over the last couple of weeks. Pray for continued healing within her. We ask for continued grace with ourselves and with our loved ones. We ask for you to abide with us. And as always, we give you thanksgiving through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we continue with our lessons today, the Gospel lesson comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. For those who are able, let us please stand for the Gospel lesson. Listen to one another a parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. And when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to their miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord do, Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And I do apologize, my allergies have been going really crazy, and, and I really do know it's my allergies, I did take a COVID test, no fever or anything else, just, <laughs> just the allergies, and you'd think all the rain would wash away the ragweed and everything else, but the dampness, I guess, just helps to increase it. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm glad uh, that as, as we go through to give thanksgiving to God, be able to to speak today and to move forward. Uh, as we listen to these lessons, we understand there's um, there's caring that goes on in all three of these lessons that we've heard today. Caring from our Creator that comes down to us. The caring of God to give the Ten Commandments to the Hebrew people, to the Israelites that have come down to us today are um, these ten suggestions, as I call them sometimes, but it, these are the ten things that kind of help us to keep in community. It helps us to look at one another with respect. It helps us to keep the proper respect to God, our proper respect for families and for our elders, our proper respect for all those things around us, just reminding us that we have been given the task of being the caretakers, as in Genesis, of the earth. So the stewardship. And then the, uh, the lesson from the Philippians, the epistle lesson, we see that there is hope in Christ. And Christ is, is the one in, in life and in death that gives us that hope to go on in, and marching forward. And then in the parable that we have just read from Matthew, um, 
we see God has given us this parable in which he describes an owner of the vineyard. Now, I take this to be kind of a parable of what God has been doing through the ages, taking care of the people. That owner of the vineyard, the owner of this piece of land that saw fit to make it a, a place where a vineyard could be grown, so that meant that there was probably drainage ditches dug and other things. We know specifically that there was a watchtower that was put in the middle, probably so that the owner could come in and look over everything in the land, to look over the different farming areas. We would call this tenant farming in our day, uh, even though we don't do a lot of tenant farming anymore. There are still some places where they have the tenant farmers, and the way that you pay for your space in tenant farming is through your produce. You give back part of it. Some now have more modern conveniences of saying, well, if I don't produce a lot, then I, you still have to pay this. So the farmer who owns the land still makes more money. So in, in this, the owner says, okay, here's all this land, the vineyards are there. You take care of all your own, of your vineyards that you're renting out, that you're producing. You must make sure that you weed, must sure, make sure that you go in and to prune the the vines and to make sure your grapes produce well this is your task and the tenants had been doing really well with with the grapes they had a good harvest it seems like and so the owner comes back and been away and says it's time for me to regain my you know what I've invested so I need the money so I need that produce and he sends out his servants to collect one servant, they just kind of, they beat up. Another one, they killed. They said, no way, this is ours, it's ours, it's ours. Now, unless you think that this is strange, even today, so we might talk about maybe a barber shop where the main barber owns the barber shop and rents out six chairs. And so each of those barbers that are renting the chair has to give money to the, the main barber because they're renting the chair. So. X amount of what you pay for for your haircut goes to that main barber. And you can imagine what the main barber would do today if their tenants didn't pay. Now, if they didn't have any customers, they may not say anything. But if, but most of the time, you see those customers are coming. And uh, and I've been into barber shops where a couple of the barbers will go, no, 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 just pay me. Don't take up the ticket to the front. So. Uh, we know that these things still go on. Well, this was like a chaos situation in the vineyard where the owner was taking care. It was a good vineyard. They had good produce, but they just didn't want to pay what they owed. And so finally, the owner takes care of it. And uh, we don't know exactly what happened because Jesus kind of ends the parable there and says, now what do you think should happen? And they said, oh, well, you got to get rid of all those tenants, you know, because finally at the end, this is the tenants and his son, and surely they, they wouldn't kill the son of the tenant. And they did. They didn't respect the son of the tenant either. All those chances that were given to those people in the vineyard that, were, that had rented were not, they did not show respect for what they had been, the opportunity they'd been given. So let's say each owner produced so much, uh, so many grapes that they got enough wages for a year and a half. They didn't want to pay for the land, they didn't want to pay for the water or anything else. They just wanted to take it all for themselves. And they did not even respect the son of the owner. So Jesus leaves it to the disciples and those gathered, what do you think? And he said, well, that owner needs just to get rid of all those and somebody else needs to come in. And the Pharisees that were gathered there, the leaders of the, of the synagogue, already knew that this parable was talking about them. And they were like, uh-oh, what do we do? Because God had sent Jesus into the world and all the, these things had been given unto people. And uh, God, through the years, has taken care of people. 
God is taking care of his creation. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve partake of the forbidden fruit, well, yes, they surely did die, but they died a physical death, but God made sure that there was opportunities for still eternity to re in that recreated state of eternity with God. And so God gave them as caretakers and sent um, judges and prophets and priests. He then, even after they turned their back so many times and, and were in captivity in Egypt and took them so long to get out, God still gave them the Ten Commandments to help them to be in community with one another and with God. After the people ignored those commandments, God still sent more prophets. God still, even though he thought it wasn't good for them, sent kings because they demanded a king to be over them so they could be like other people in the world. God, even after so many times as the people said no to the covenant, no to their agreements, no to to what they had signed on for, still brought them back. And finally, God sends Jesus, the very Son. And while the Pharisees in today's lesson not notice that Jesus is a good teacher, they think that he's probably a prophet, but they still don't like him. They still don't want him around because he's not doing good for the synagogue and good for the government because of what he says about God's love for everyone. It doesn't give us the edge over someone else to have the fear so that we can just take whatever we want from him. And so they can't get rid of this son, the Pharisees. They can't get rid of Jesus right now. They know very well what the crowds think. And he said, this owner of the vineyard, he needs to get rid of all those tenants. And who are the tenants in God's kingdom? <laughs> Pharisees, Sadducees, the priests, the Levites, all those that God has put in charge that has not followed God's covenant, that has not done as the commandments tell us to. And Jesus sums up these commandments all in two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. These individuals have not done that. They have loved themselves so much that they have increased their coffers. They have increased all of their riches and wealth and say, I'm here, you're there, you can't cross over because this is my place. I'm the only one that has access to God. I'm the only one that's chosen by God. I'm the only one that God shows favor to. But we know different. We know different today because of the stories from the gospel. Because of the witness of people through the ages, we know that Jesus came to share to share life and to share life abundantly, to bring us into full communion with God, to show a way from death to life so that we never have to experience total separation from our Creator. And God comes in and says, those tenants who supposedly took care of the vineyards will be gone because they have not shared properly. And it's not as if there weren't chances for those tenants to give properly. There was not as if there was not a first chance and a second chance and a third. It seems like there was even four chances for these people to do what was right and still they did not do what is right. There is a point that you can't do anything for God, that you can't do anything for another person. A person has to make the choice for themselves. And that's what we understand God has given us, a choice to be in the kingdom. And the price we pay is not money. The price we pay is love. That if we are given love from God, 
then we must love one another. And so this is what motivates us. This is what moves us through the kingdom. Love that sees respect and life, a precious life that is equally given to all people, no matter what tongue, creed, or race, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, God welcomes you. God calls you. God doesn't say, you can't be here. God says, come, my child. But we have to accept the invitation. We have to come. God doesn't force us. And so those tenants were not forced to give the money. But when it was time to collect, they said, no way. We don't want to be part of this. We're going to try to take it for our own. God's kingdom doesn't belong just to me or to one or two other people. God's kingdom belongs to all people everywhere. And so we are stewards of the whole land, not part of the land. Of the whole people, not part of the people. May we go forth with the blessings of God, understanding all people are precious in God's sight. Amen and amen. At this time, we'll be receiving our afternoon offering. There's a, actually, I remembered to put the offering plate in the back today, so. Uh, but for you at home, there'll be an address on the screen if you'd like to give. Uh, but always offer us up at Victoria in your prayers and pray for the ministry and pray for one another. <laughs> Invited by God, prepared by the loving hands of God, through the uh, through the uh, host of Jesus Christ. As we prepare for the time, we'll be singing beneath the cross of Jesus. <laughs>
In the name of the living God, in the name of the victorious Christ, and in the name of the mysterious Spirit, come to the table where bread is broken and wine poured out. Receive the life of God, share the victory of Christ, and enter into the mystery of the Spirit. Let us continue to pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us join in the responsorial prayer of consecration. As the Holy Spirit has strengthened your church, may this your blessed bread, which is now broken, bring life to us. May we be living signs of the charity we share with one another. May this your holy cup poured out for all be our salvation. We pray that we who drink from the one cup may be faithful signs of your love. Amen. to a close in our worship, but certainly not a close to our walk with God, we'll be singing our last and closing hymn of the day, Awake My Soul, Stretch Out Every Nerve, and followed by the benediction.
benediction. The worship of the gathered community is now ended. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Carry with you what is precious to, all, to us all, reverence for all life, beauty that displays itself in love, deep, abiding peace. Amen. Amen.